Some are born great, some attain greatness, and some have greatness entrusted in them. Life is certainly more restful and sweeter when transition is on to glory. It may not really matter how long life was spent here on earth. What matters most is how well and fulfilling that life was lived to determine what crown is won when the battle of life is over. And so, an accomplished life on earth demands a comprehensive and joyful celebration in death. However, no great man lives in vain. The history of the world is but the biography of great men. And so, there is a dignity in dying that doctors should not dare to deny. This is certainly one of such. With these words, we remember, respect, pay tribute, and celebrate the life and times of our hero, in whom we found the true meaning of the word hero as divinity. And now, the chronicle of the life of a man in all our hearts, His Royal Highness, Eze Sir Emmanuel Madukwem Unaka, KSJ, JP, MA, BSC, Coordinator, Eza Hunukwe, traditional ruler and Uburu one of Abba, who is celebrated today, having slept in the Lord at the age of 98. Born into the Ishiokwara family, Eze Emmanuel Madukwem Unaka was the second son of a family of two males and two females to let Chief Unaka Wafo and let Lolo Obidia Unaka Wafo. As nature would have it, this accomplished great had his early education as at when due, and according to him, it wasn't less than a very great experience. My name is uh, Madukwe Monaka, a traditional lover. I started school here, in the primary school. In our primary school, in our here, what you used to call the fan department. I did that because of uh, politics. I left Abba in 1929. Yeah. So, uh, then I went to Unkwe, Central School in Unkwe. I left that 1931 yeah. and went my follow my senior brother to Anisha. Yeah. And I yeah, at Anisha, I start, started my education. I went to St. John and the whole Trinity. Okay. And I entered CKC. Just for one semester, I changed and went to our after his secondary education, it was time to show how industrious he was, and so he lets us into his work experience. 1943, after taking the Cambridge, I moved away from Malaysia to Enugu. I got appointment in the Post and Telegraph as a telegraph clerk. I did that a couple of years. I didn't like more school. Then Zik, Zik was publishing West African Pilots. was publishing Lagos, okay. West African Pilot, and they published there. But they want uh, school leavers, okay. college leavers, who have uh, knowledge of additional math. So I applied. Okay. I was recruited. Went to, I went to Lagos with others who were stationed at Ocean. And uh, uh, we, that was during the war, okay. Second World War. Okay. You see, Nigeria was a colonial, a colonial country then, okay. under British rule. Okay. So we were all serving under the uh, British uh, Army. Okay. So uh, we stayed and studied, uh, 
uh, aeronautics okay. in uh, Oceania. Okay. When we finished, I was uh, posted to Kano, okay. spent uh, two months in Kano, okay. and then to, to Medugu. Okay. Uh, but, I stayed in Medigri until 1946 when the war ended. Okay. So I came down to Jos, to Zaria, to meet my cousin there, the Kaduna. From Kaduna, uh, I went to Lagos. I didn't come down here. Okay. I went to Lagos, stayed two months, and got appointment under uh, customs and exercise. A stunning significant aspect of this icon is the fact that he is well read enlightened and exposed to the envy of all. No wonder his reign was so crowned with goodies and positive achievements like no one else has recorded in his time. What a successful king he was. In his own words, he tells us how far he went in his academic pursuit. From 1946 to 49, I left this country for the United States. I got to America under assistantship okay. when I registered I had a I had a mission to do electrical engineering okay. but uh, because of my friend Annex in Jaka the owner of uh, she's from Akoka okay. we yeah. both went to school at all right. he helped me and my cousin out here okay. let uh, uh, Nathaniel out here so okay. I choose to go to Forum University Okay. It's a Catholic university. Okay. I went there, stayed there, I did my undergraduate okay. in business administration and economics. Okay. I graduated in 1954. Uh, okay. I moved down, moved up to New York right. and registered in Forum University. That is a Jesuit. You might be hearing of it. They are very dis That's why I disagree with the people here. Yeah. They are very disciplined. <laughs> they are Jesuit priests. Right. They are disciplined priests. Yeah. <laughs> like a good orator and historian, he means no words in letting his listeners into his surgeons and escapades abroad, including how he undertook courses in international relations at the Columbia University and also how he met the great women of his dreams. I did my graduate work in economics okay. and then I registered for second degree okay. at Columbia University there again in New York. I married 1956. 1956. March 1956. It's okay. my wife for information. She's an American. Okay. So we got married. Okay. That's after I've got, I was about to get my uh, master's degree. And so, on his return to Nigeria from the USA in 1958, he joined the public service of Eastern Nigeria as an administrative officer. He served in various ministries till 1963, including the Welfare Department, where he retired voluntarily in 1978 as Chief Social Welfare Officer. Eze Unaka, while in service, became a Foundation Member and Honorary Secretary of the Eastern Nigeria East Central State Arts Council from 1963 to 1976. He also participated in several in-service courses and seminars, including Man Owo Bay course. He was a member of Magistrates Association of Nigeria, having been a magistrate for eight years, Board of National Orthopedic Hospital Enugu, and Board of Governors College of Immaculate Conception Enugu. As administrative officer, he attended the seminar on the judiciary in a presidential system conducted by the International Institute of Public Management, Washington, D.C., USA. He was president of five Chesia homes in Ibado, Lagos, Port Harcourt, Enugu, and Olu, respectively. <laughs> Disability is not a bad thing. It can even be something to be proud of. We are all different and all have different abilities. Every child can 
be an ambassador of ability to our families, schools, and communities. We each have ideas, experience, and skills that can serve everybody else. What I mean, disability, is not inability. What this child will do now, I can't do it. In that respect, I am disabled in that. Long before he became the traditional ruler in 1978, he was the chairman ABBA Improvement Union Lagos branch from 1964 to 1969. Chairman ABBA Improvement Union Enugu branch 1970 to 1974. He was also co-founder of ABBA Technical School, now Community High School ABBA, from its inception before the government takeover of schools 1972 to 1973. He served as chairman, board of governors, Community High School ABBA from 1983 to 1984 and co-founder ABBA Post Office. Also in his pursuits in the economic activities of his autonomous community, he took advantage of the federal government policy on rural banking that saw to the establishment of the Union Bank PLC in ABBA in 1987. What a great achievement. Eze Madukwem Onaka was a devout Christian of the Catholic faith. He was a knight of the ancient and noble order of Knights of St. John KSJ International. Actually, in this order, in Nigeria, yeah. we are the founding fathers. Uh, we founded the Knights of St. John in Nigeria in 1976. So after our formalities, we are 24. We are initiated by Ghanaians. And uh, since then, we have got about, uh, about nine, um, 109, 109 commanders. Okay. So we are 419, but now I belong to uh, 433. Okay. A member of the Diocesan Council, Enugu, and that of Parish Council, Sacred Heart, Enugu. At his autonomous community, he was one of the pillars of Christ the King Parish, Abba, St. Theresa's Parish Church, Abba, and other denominations in and around Abba and Wangile local government area. Wow, what an unbeatable record. A man so blessed in every aspect of his life, Eze Madukwem Onaka had a great family life with Ugweze Joanna Mary Onaka as wife and also blessed with childbirth. Being a member of many social and charity organizations, including the Enugu Sports Club, Nigeria Boy Scouts, Nigeria Red Cross Society, Akanuibiam National Ambulance, Nigeria Field Society, and the Royal Stars, Eze E. M. Onaka had several personal attributes that endeared him to friends, peers, and family. He was widely acknowledged by all who came across him in his lifetime as a peaceful, humble and hard-working man. As an advocate of fairness and justice, he exhibited a people-oriented style of rulership and was very transparent in his ways. His personal and public conduct were above board. A great man of integrity, having clocked 98 years in life and many years on the throne, he was grateful to God for his kindness and appeal to all to show love and live in peace and unity with one another in Abba Autonomous Community and in Abba Amano as a whole. He was the coordinator and chairman of the founding fathers of Wangele, very articulate and retentive. Abba Wangele, 
people that can kill a razzle and his nephew. Obraba Beze Abamano, which means that all a razzle. As a Marco Manaka was a peace loving human being, he never discriminated. He doesn't want to hear gossips. He hates people coming to him to say, I had, I, I was told, I learned. If you want to talk to him, he will involve, he will make you get the person you are talking against. So, he has a different way of life. He mixes, but he, he was a gentleman to the core. He doesn't eat anyhow, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. I served him in so many areas. I lived with him when I was schooling. I lived with him when I was working. I was very close to him. He was a, a disciplined. He don't mess around when you are around him. So he helped to guide me. I learned a lot from him. Whether people hate, hate him or love him, it doesn't make him to change his mind. Whatever people do, I have to stomach it. And that's what I learned from him. I may disagree, but I don't hate people. She has taught me so much. Now that he has gone, people will get to know more about him. They will come to realize that the way they think he was, not actually what he was. And they will one day realize it. He was a man. Doesn't matter whether you are his brother or you are his nephew or you are his cousin. If somebody outside does something better than you, that person is his own man. As I said before, he doesn't discriminate. He goes on what, on what people are. And he loves people, tries to better their life especially in education. And by man, I miss In 1999, and most other years of his reign, during New Year festivals, he takes it as a point of duty to visit all communities under his jurisdiction with all his chiefs and cabinet members. <laughs> So much loved by his people, both as an individual and as their Eze. Iriji 1995 was an event to behold. <laughs>
maka umeir oto a prai awu doko ge butrai ata be ma ata a pu ga ti de ka pro le beto ge wo tra yo bi ge wo tra yo do na choko do ni awu la nda ba ni le ka he wo re do la ni yo mba so bi ka he cha ri ya ka he mu do ka he wo re ni mo ni ya o mu me ya no choro do bi de wo ti ye mo tra na ka bu re bi a mo tra mu do a mo tra mu o to ga ni si do chi chi e wore hunanya ejilo bi oko ejilo bi wo ngoro nye uro bi ku no bi he ni mro ti ge si e mege ni bo da to bi ala ni am motra na ka si ri ke ka pa owo inwudo in 1999 precisely as part of activities marking the annual new year festival the eze himself was on the football pitch for a history making novelty football match between the men and the women featuring especially the chiefs and their lolo with his royal highness Eze E.M. Unaka as a captain of his side. What a great day, a day of joy and that of celebration for the people of this kingdom. And this obviously proves how down to earth the Eze is with his people. To him, let all faces be filled with smiles at all times. Most humorous of all was when the Eze, Unaka, had to carry the ball in his hands, as if a football match had suddenly turned a handball competition, to see if his team could make a positive difference, because the women were leading in goal scoring at that time. A great sense of humor he expressed there, isn't it? He was an advocate of the retenance and sustenance of our culture, tradition, and most especially our language, Igbo. As such, he had an Igbo language interview session. <laughs> identity Another very enviable quality of Ezesa E. M. Onaka is the fact that he was an organized and eventful man. This is expressed in the various events and occasions organized in his time, including one of the most celebrated the event and celebration of his 25th coronation anniversary, an occasion that also saw several deserving freeborns being adorned with chieftaincy titles. Being conferred the honorary chieftaincy title. On this day, on this day, December 2001, December 2001, do humbly declare, do humbly declare, before the traditional rulers, before the traditional rulers, and over one of us, and over one of us, the members of our chiefs, the members of our chiefs, and cabinet, and cabinet, and all the people of our and all the people of our their friends and relations. Their friends and relations. Their gathers. Their gathers. One. One. That I pledge my allegiance. That I pledge my allegiance. Support and love. Support and love. To His Royal Highness. To His Royal Highness. Let the map come on account. 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 Let the map come on account.
the best of my knowledge. And that I shall have the best of my knowledge. And capability. And capability. Honesty and sincerity. Honesty and sincerity. Without fear or favor. Without fear or favor. Offer my advice. Offer my advice to him. To him. In the interest of the other autonomous community. In the interest of our autonomous community, the society and the nation at large. The society and the nation at large. Correct. Correct. So that I shall be the best of my knowledge and ability. So that I shall be the best of my knowledge. Contribute to the unity and progress of our autonomous community. Contribute to the unity and progress of our autonomous community. And at all times. And at all times. Church Thanksgiving service marking the anniversary. From the history, Ogo is the father of Abba, the founder of Abba. So our present Ogo that we are about to lay down represents the Ogo that founded Abba. He is the Ogo one of Abba and is a Hunukwe of Abba. This is Madukwe Monaka. We had a very good cordial relationship. He was my mentor when I was about to go study abroad. He showed me that he was a father and an uncle. He taught us humility. He taught us hard work. He also taught us the virtues of being an Abba person. On the eve of my leaving Nigeria to sojourn overseas as a student, he was one of the elders of Abba I met. He had a very good relationship with my late father, Peter Madabuchuku. That relationship continued. So on my eve, I personally went to him to see him. He sat me down and told me exactly what I was going to overseas to go and meet. And he gave me encouragement. I remember writing letters several times. He was, was always there to tell me what to do, to give me words of encouragement. And I remember when I came back with the golden fleet, 
It was one of the people I went to see and presented it to him. His awareness was what I would describe a man, an easy that stood above his mates. A man that will always call your attention. A man that will always encourage you. He's always there for you. At any given time, you go to see him. He's out there. He will listen to you. If he has any advice to give, he will give you. As the president of our development union, he always talked to me. He said, Go. Listen. Dialogue. Before you decide the next thing to do. And I've always believed that. I wouldn't have been what I am today if I did not relate to Eze Madukwem Onaka. It was in his time that a peace match was staged by the women of Abba for the peace and unity of their husbands. They also backed up this movement with series of prayer sessions. The support given by Eze Onaka by his presence especially shows how peaceful and God-fearing he is. Indeed, he was a lovable person. His belief in God and Christianity is not in doubt. And at the CKC inauguration in 1987, At the reception organized for the chief judge of Imo State by Abba community in the year 2000 was really a memorable event. the workshop for traditional rulers in Imo State. I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 I'm going
I am the fourth son of Beza or the Onaka Uburo of Aba. It's been very interesting on the occasion of my father's passing as we are getting ready to commemorate and bury him to think about my father's life. My father was a very interesting and complicated man, uh, very dedicated to truth and um, sometimes at the expense of um, um, cherished things, things that he himself cherished but things that people around him cherished. Um, my father was a very strict disciplinarian very principled man who, for that reason, uh, never cut corners. I would often joke that perhaps my father was the only person in Nigeria who actually paid income tax. Now, it's likely that there are others, but my father very diligently paid his income taxes and kept the receipts very fastidiously. So uh, that is an example of just how um, principled and disciplined he was, uh, such that uh, he would never give bribes. Anybody who knew my father knew well that he was uh, a connoisseur of the arts. He really loved the arts. He was for the longest time uh, um, in, at the, in the East Central State and then and later Anambra State Arts Council was one of the founding members. Uh, he was a very um, a fastidious churchgoer, very serious about his religion, but he didn't just pay lip service to it. He really believed in a very Catholic sort of Christian humility that you didn't wave your religiosity or spirituality about. You practiced your religion very quietly and personally and therefore didn't believe in imposing his particular religious beliefs on others. He believed that we should all be contemplative about our lives, to think seriously and be reflective about everything we do. And one of the things that I enjoyed doing with my father, Anodala Nambwede, Natuinu, back and forth, from various cultures, uh, even when he listened to music, he preferred traditional music. Uh, honestly, in my opinion, my father is a boy, but it worries is with a good He will stand up, you know, but as best he could. There was a, a very long one. I say, okay, so long, but i and I would ask him, what does that mean? And then he would break it down. That the reason, the, behind the the reason you shouldn't always follow what your mates are doing is because things affect different people differently. So, something. Which is why I was saying he wants us to be reflective. And that is about. Life is a long lesson. In any experience in your life, it will teach you something. And usually, more is something very deep. It will be those times when something happens to you. Something one of your parents told you long time ago will come to mind. Or And so many times in my life as an educator, uh, when I am working with my students, uh, and because of the kind of work I do with my students, I interact with them outside the classroom. One of the things my father always said that I, rem I remember is 
education is a continuing thing you learn every day so you have to look at every experience as a learning experience even if it's a bad experience from it then it's a wasted experience but all know when something emotional from it then it's not a wasted experience even if it was a bad experience my father lived a very long time uh, but he also lived a full life it wasn't just the length of it it was the breath if any of us can live half the life he lived we would have lived a very good life another very memorable event to all and sundry in the community and especially to him is the funeral ceremony of his elder brother the one who brought him up late chief Lawrence Amoku Unaka between 29th and 30th of November 1995 Worthy of note is the fact that three other autonomous communities were created in his time. And history will not forget that the illustrious sons of Abba, who later became Ezes of the three newly created communities, were all given chieftaincy titles by this same great man of timber and caliber. A one in all man, an all in one king, a complete gentleman in all ramification. They include His Royal Highness Eze GGI Ojako, honored with chieftaincy title by Eze Unaka in 1984. He was one among the first 20 chiefs he honored. His Royal Highness Eze G Shiwobi of Umudruna Abba was one among the 35 indigenous chiefs honored with chieftaincy in 1990. And now he is a king. <laughs> and traditional law of our autonomous community. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to I learned a lot from Eza Honopa. He will make you to say the truth. He will make you to behave well. He's a straightforward man. And above all, He's a brother knight, knight of St. John International, which I'm a member. He's a noble brother. His Royal Highness, Eze Sar E. M. Onaka, is a very sincere and reliable fellow who is always available when called upon or needed for the betterment of his people. I go answer my people. I will refuse them. Yes, and I don't know what he until I hear from them. A gesture confirmed when he was on hand to honor the invitation by his people in Lagos at the launching of Abba Ebandieze, Lagos branch. Well, uh, I welcome the idea because I've been coming. Actually, I'm the founder of Abba Development Union in Lagos here in the 40s when I was a custom officer. So anything they are doing, I must, I must attend it and grace it because uh, uh, I like Lagos boys. The, this, 
the, all the good things I set up here, they are continued. I want you to continue. I'm happy with them. They're always progressing. Not only what they're doing here, they do so at home. So I don't want anybody who will disrupt what they're doing in Abba. You see, my wife, she just returned from the United States because of the interest we have in development in Abba. That's why she came all along with one leg. So she's very happy with me. She's an American citizen. She's more Abba than the Abbas. And I'm very glad they organized this launching. And I think it's going to be very successful. Because when we do something, we usually do it well. And I feel they've done very well today. <laughs> His people also expressed what and how they feel about him. Uh, Na <laughs> Nihininawa <laughs> Look at the government. My ID, 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 my the good to some of us. Many of them don't know what you are. I all did I am too much. I like it, I like it. I call it a call, you may today, I think I can me here. I got like a nice person. Of course, I'm going to I know you look on your I know me to a me home. Oh, by you, I both of it are happy. You're number one. Abba, dear, or one back home, or come over. Okay, more or less. Abba, Nile. In your eight years old, my bad, you know, 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 you Oh, I'm not going to walk out. I'm going to move around. I'm so good morning. I'm all right. I'm going to talk to Oma. I'm going to ask him. Oma, you can go and ask him. He never said good morning. He never said good afternoon. A good evening. I'm going to Oma. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him. Okay. So I'm going to talk to Oma. I just move Imadema, 
His Royal Highness Eze E. M. Onaka was really an honorable man by every measure. He was a true reflection of Mahatma Gandhi's submission. But a man becomes great not in money measure, but exactly in the degree in which he works for happiness, joy, and the well-being of his fellow man. He was a good disciplinarian, tolerant, humble, approachable, and a devout Catholic who led exemplary life. He related well with Christians and all others and positively affected mankind both in his community and beyond. Death is a reflection of man's inevitable contract with nature. Much as man dreads death, it is unavoidable. And man is a weakling in negotiating its eventful occurrence. So, as death takes its turn on mankind, man can merely discuss death but cannot defer nor prevent it. Papa, you know that if there is anything we can do, to stop or withhold the pang of death, we would have done that. But since all souls were created for the purpose of serving God and shall return to the Creator in due time, we submit to the will of God on you. Had you lived a little longer, we would have appreciated it. But since it is your Creator and Maker that requires more of your services over there, we find solace in the fact that you've been called up to a higher realm to represent our interest. And so, what more can we say to a man so extolled and missed not just by the family, friends and well-wishers, but the community as a whole? Wow! Well, it's been said that from dust we were made, and to dust we must return in fulfillment of our inevitable contract with Mother Nature. We therefore console ourselves in the fact that Eze Onaka lived a resoundingly fulfilled life worthy of emulation. No doubt, an accomplished life on earth demands a comprehensive and joyful celebration in death. And to the wise, sleep is death as death is sleep. Of this bad world, the loveliest and the best has smiled and said good night and gone to rest. What else do we say? Papa, may your gentle, peaceful, caring and loving soul rest in perfect peace till we meet to part no more. Adieu. His Royal Highness, Ezesa Emmanuel Madukwem Onaka, KSJ, JP, MA, PSC, Coordinator, Eza Hunukwe, Traditional Ruler and Uburu One. Abba, you were a great man. Rest in the bosom of our Lord till we meet again to part no more. <laughs> His Royal Highness says, 